It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Just a few days ago, Israeli activist Jeff Halper was detained by police in the West Bank. He was taken away by police while he was in the middle of leading a tour of the illegal colony Ma'ali Ajumim and was questioned for possessing BDS materials. BDS is the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement, a nonviolent movement demanding that Israel uphold international law. The Israeli state has passed two laws specifically against the BDS movement. One piece of the legislation is from 2011, which allows companies to sue BDS activists for compensation for damage caused to them by the BDS boycotts. So far, no Israeli company has made use of this law. The second law is a very new law banning BDS supporters from entering Israel. It does not apply, however, to Israeli citizens. Nevertheless, Israeli police officers detained Jeff Halper, citing BDS as the reason. This is not surprising given the way in which Israeli officials speak about the BDS ban. Let's hear the Israeli Minister for Intelligence Affairs, and his name is Yazrael Katz, speaking about BDS at a conference last year. Israel has a special BDS. You could see why they may be confused about the application of the laws, given the way officials are talking about it. Now joining me to discuss what happened to him is Jeff Halper. Jeff is co-founder and director of the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions. He's the author of four books. The most recent among them is War Against the People. In 2006, Dr. Halper was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Dr. Halper, I thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me on. So, uh, Dr. Halper, tell us about the kind of tour you were conducting uh, and what actually happened when, you, when they pulled you away and detained you. Well, <clears throat> you know, as the head of the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions, uh, I give tours to groups that come to the country, activist groups, diplomats, journalists, we're very active in terms of trying to show people the lay of the land. We claim that you don't really understand the political situation here, and especially how Israel is making the occupation permanent. Its intentions of, of controlling the entire country forever, unless you really look at the details of exactly how Israel has planned its settlements. Even the word settlement is misleading because it sounds like a couple shacks on the hilltop, Whereas, in fact, a settlement like Mali and Dumim, where I was with the group, is 40,000 people with highways and infrastructures um, and located in a way that fragments Palestinian territory so that it's very important that we take groups out there, that we take members of Congress, for example, in order to show them exactly the way the occupation is constructed. And I was out there like I am often, um, at a certain point where you kind of see Jerusalem in the distance from Male Adumim. And I think what happened, I'm not sure, I think what happened is we take groups that are all the time. And the neighbors around probably heard us talking. They've probably seen a couple BDS signs. For example, I was holding up a sign like this, which is pretty BDS-y. <laughs> and, uh, and someone, I guess, called the police. Now, in a normal democratic society, the police would say, well, thank you for calling, but, you know, people can talk in the street, but not here. And in Israel, the police came, detained me, put me in the paddy wagon, um, wanted to said something about BDS. They didn't tell me why they detained me, took out all my maps, all my materials, photographed everything, and then they let me go. How did they even know that you had such material on you? Well, I think because, uh, you know, uh, we're known <laughs> in uh, Male Adumim and in that area because we bring three or four groups a week to tour. And that's, a, that's a, a place we normally come. So I have a feeling the neighbors sort of know who we are. 
They've probably heard us talk a little bit. Maybe they've seen our maps. They, they get an understanding after a while of what we're saying, which isn't very complimentary towards Malay Adumim, of course. And, uh, and I think they just simply told the... Uh, you know, Israelis don't know much about anything. <laughs> it has to do with occupation or Palestinians or the left. So for them, BDS is everything. BDS is sort of like the cover term you use. So they probably called the police, and they just said BDS. Without and what did the police sound like? Did they know what the law was and what they were, material they were exactly searching for and uh, about the BDS? Why did they um, detain you? How did they explain it? Well, they didn't explain it, uh, actually. It was only... Uh, when Haaretz did a story about it, Haaretz newspaper, that they contacted the police. And the police told them that I was detained for incitement. That's what it was. It wasn't so much BDS per se. I mean, it's not illegal yet. Israel Katz, by the way, who you quote, this minister of uh, intelligence in Israel, has talked about eliminating BDS supporters. I mean, you know, there's real threats. It isn't some, some joke. We're not there yet. But I think um, you know what you know. The, the overall you know charge they could kind of pin on me was incitement for some reason. I mean, it, it was all a joke. I knew they weren't going to follow it up. But nevertheless, it's scary. Right. The idea that they are pulling people in for what they're saying on the street. Right, Jeff. Ever since the Israeli invasion of Gaza in 2014, there has been a real crackdown on freedom of speech in Israel. Palestinian poet, for example, Darin Tartur, was arrested for a poem she posted on Facebook. People lost their jobs for expressing sympathy towards Palestinian victims of Israel violence um, you know, during that 2014 attack. And then it continues today. Is this the first time you've been targeted in this way? No, I've been, I've been arrested and detained innumerable times. <laughs> it kind of goes with the turf here. I mean, it is the first time, I have to say, that I was detained for something I've said, you know, rather than something I actually did in a protest or resistance or something. Um, and that is a scary thing. And the country is closing down. I think Israel's in the process of kind of mopping up it feels, especially in the era of Trump, that it can really complete this, this enterprise of nailing down apartheid, ending this whole thing. And part of it is, of course, ending all kinds of dissent. So they feel entitled uh, to, to, do, to act this way, I think because they feel that they have the backing of, of Trump and, that's all, and Congress, and that's all Israel seems to need. Right. Um, as far as you understand uh, from the general public in Israel, how are they receiving these laws about detaining and uh, deporting, in some cases, people entering, the, uh, entering Israel uh, who are supporters of BDS, and then application of this other law? How is, how is it being received? Well, you know, on the one hand, it's received very well. I mean, Israelis are very much against BDS, and they... they I mean, like I said before, I'm not kidding. Israelis don't know anything when it comes to these kinds of issues. You know, they don't go to the occupied territory. They don't think about it. I have to say it's hard to convey this, but everything we, we talk about, occupation, Palestinians, war, peace, and so on, human rights, are completely non-issues in Israel. I mean, it's almost as if we're living in Nebraska. <laughs> you know, they're non-issues. In the last election, a... There was a survey of what's on the minds of the Israeli voter. What are they voting for? And all this stuff, occupation, was number 11. So from their point of view, you know, all this is really kind of nonsense. We're a bunch of kooks. BDS is simply a fight against anti-Semitism. I think the BDS ban, in a sense, has really impacted the American Jewish community much more than Israelis. Israelis don't care who comes in or who doesn't come in. They, they really have disconnected, they washed their hands of this whole thing. But I think for American Jews, most of whom are liberal, and uh, for whom human rights still means something, and, uh, and critical of Israel, whether, whether openly or not, the whole idea of this kind of a ban and, and, and shutting up the voices of dissenters and so on, I think has really affected them. You know, more than a hundred Jewish academics in the United States 
signed a letter saying they're not going to come to Israel until this ban on BDS is rescinded. So I think in, in a way it's having much more of a corrosive effect on support for Israel abroad, especially in the Jewish community, than it is here in Israel where it's kind of a non-issue. All right, Jeff, I, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and explaining what happened to you. Um, our time is up, so I'll thank you so much for joining us. Right, thanks for having me on. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.